There's an old saying that money doesn't buy you happiness, it just lets you choose the kind of misery you prefer. Well, a new working paper by the economists Betsy Stevenson and Justin Wolfers shows that people everywhere, and that's everywhere, report more satisfaction as they grow richer. It's not rocket science, is it? This is Tonight. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Tonight, we look at what job you should be pursuing, or at least encouraging your kids to pursue, if you're looking for a pay rise. Joining me, Samantha Harmer, who's director at Ubuntu Recruitment, and in Cape Town, Zakia Essa, psychologist and director from the Career Guidance Company. Zakia, let's start with you. Guide me, please. I want to make some money. Where should I be going? Well, um, thank you for having, on, having me on your show, Bruce. Um, in terms of uh, where to make money, that's often what young adults come to us looking for, um, directing them into the fields that are going to be money making. Um, it's not just about money making, however, um, as you mentioned, you know, there, is, there are things like job satisfaction and making sure that you, you have sort of that work life balance. Um, but, you know, the trending fields or money making fields, um, that that are currently available, um, it's somewhat sort of IT, engineering, finance. If we're looking at very broad fields, um, such as those fields, um, which are often where students uh, seem to want to go into as well. Um, there are many bursaries offered, many scholarships offered for those particular fields, um, accounting, um, the more uh, general financial fields as well. So those are sort of your, your top trending um, that at least I'm noticing with regards to where the students want to be and where the parents are directing uh, their children into as well. Zakia, that's singularly depressing. There isn't a single artistic career <laughs> in there at all, is there, Sam? Because the reality is those are the skills that are in short supply. Those are the skills generally that require maths and science and, and other slightly tougher matric subjects in order to qualify for university to even get on the rung to get there. Well, I don't, I don't believe in that kind of um, thought process. I believe in what makes you get up in the morning. What is it that really drives you? What, what makes you motivated? Um, we have a lot of people who are talented in this country and their forte could be in dancing. They could then go and teach dancing or perform within dancing. Look at the criteria that really get you going because at the end of the day, you can have all the money you want, but it's not going to get you out of bed. It's not going to get you out of bed, but if we accept the good professors who did the researchers research, which says that around the world, the more money you have, the more likely you are to be satisfied with the life you have. Sometimes you have to sacrifice a little bit of, I don't know, this, a couple of the soft issues in order to make the bucks so that in the three hours a day you have off, you can enjoy the bucks. You can enjoy the bucks, but at the end of the day, you look at people like Mr. Sugar himself, started off with absolutely nothing. Alan Sugar, and, you're talking uh, Alan about. Alan Sugar, yeah. and look at him today. You know, he's a, a wow, powerful man, but came from absolutely no graduate or, you know, background. But, but we don't hear the stories of the people who tried and failed. We tend to hear the success stories. Richard Branson is dyslexic. He should not be succeeding in the business world. Alan Sugar comes from nowhere, should not be succeeding in the business world. Exactly. These, are, these, are, these are people who are exceptional and have exceptional talents and have applied those talents. Now, in, in the world today, if you look at the, most long, the longest running chief executive, 10 years on the JSE, and you look at people who well into their 60s are still working, People like uh, Chris Becker, uh, people like um, Yanni Mouton, people um, like Brian Joffe and Stephen Kosef, um, and others, um, Marcus Uerstedt Steinhoff, most of them are accountants. They run their own businesses, they've got executive tenure, they studied accountancy. They're not accountants, thank goodness. Um, sorry, accountants. <laughs> um, but but they've, taken, they've studied the, the, the skills that empowered them to, to, to go into the jobs that pay the big bucks. Yes. And yes, you can go that way, but I still would don't believe that if you, you know, oh, well, I'm going into a specific career because I want to make money. You know, you might find like three years down your university degree that I actually don't even like what I'm doing. Why am I doing this when I should have actually diversified into something else? Zakia, how do you counsel people who are terribly good at speech and drama and have got lovely speaking voices who come to you and say, Mum and Dad say I need to become a doctor? Well, Bruce, that's a common challenge that we do face um, as, as sort of career guidance practitioners or as counseling psychologists. 
um, when we when we get those type of students they obviously you know have tremendous talent that they can put to good use the arts I mean in South Africa you know also depends where you are um, which country you're in uh, what the opportunities are like um, but we, we say to students you know if that is your passion again it's true what Sam says you want to wake up in the morning and and really go to work enjoying what you do but then we need an integration of um, qualifications and if it is drama that you're interested in then pursue a business course as well um, you know so that at least you know you've got something some other skill set which can assist you in terms of making money is sort of a plan B if something doesn't if you don't get the opportunities right in terms of the arts or sports fields for instance but there are many students with many different talents um, you can't push everybody into the same uh, sort of or into the trending career so to speak and there are also a number of creative careers as well which can be pursued within uh, business fields within engineering fields uh, where they can also make use of their talents so we need to be a little bit innovative in the way that we then counsel students and look at what does the market require um, what can we direct students into that's going to make them some money at least let them earn a living um, but also to to satisfy the uh, job satisfaction and um, make use of their talents and their particular strengths and to see what suits their personalities and their abilities and interests uh, Sam probably the world's best known business presenter whose name shall not be mentioned on this channel was on a quest for uh, going to going on to business television his parents said you're not going to do that well you can in your own time but you get a proper degree first he went and studied law um, and, and then went and followed the passion is that the route to go I would think that um, in within our country there are a lot of shortfalls when it comes to certain aspects of recruitment and you know as I've said before if we've got certain skills and certain mindsets I know for instance our, our blue collar sector there's a, a vast amount of kids that should be going into those fields because they are more technically minded mm -hmm. and and going into that and I do believe that you should always have something to fall back on so whether it's a, it's a BA that at least you've got some form of mindset so that if mom and dad have for, forced you into accounting or whatever you've always got something to fall back on but if this is Africa's decade perhaps the next two or three decades are Africa's decades and um, people who are watching us in Nairobi or in Abuja this evening who are looking at educating their kids and saying hold on a second where are the critical uh, skill shortages on the African continent that's got to be in engineering um, and if we're developing our continent that's where it's got to be and it's got to be in mathematics and science um, yes. you know those are great opportunities are, are on this continent for for growth and expansion yes and one of the things that we're finding at the moment is we're getting a lot of engineers coming through our systems but the the unfortunate part is that they haven't got the the startup that they're looking for they, they haven't got the opportunities of companies taking them on and then showing them the ropes as as we've had in decades before engineering definitely is a, a huge stepping stone where children should be studying um, especially the women sector as well yeah. um, we're finding that the men are doing it more than the women are and yet when the women that are coming out in the engineering fields and have studied are actually the better engineer yeah. than, than the males are so yes it's definitely a, a field that kids should be going into in a moment Sam I want you to think about this just for a moment what job do we need to do to earn the biggest bucks what is the most surprising perhaps that's a better question what is the most surprising career that earns big bucks on the African continent I'll give you 30 seconds to think about that as uh, the to you in Cape Town when it comes to uh, to career changes coming to making career choices for an African future where, where are the hotspots well, you know, Bruce, you're speaking about sort of an African future, um, but the trend is that you do need to also be thinking global. So Africa within a global context, uh, we need to develop Africa, but keep our eye on the bigger picture. And that's integrating ourselves and our systems and our economy and our politics in terms of the global, the global future. So that gives you a bit more option. Um, most of the companies that you are going to be working for are anywhere sporting you know they've got um, uh, companies all over the world um, so you do need to start thinking a little bit more broadly um, with the eye on Africa but obviously thinking a bit more broadly so where can I develop my skill set the problem that we're finding is that um, 
a lot of students will come out with university degrees in these very fields of engineering and finance and so on, but they are coming out with a generalist skill set that isn't well integrated in terms of what the business world needs at this point in time. So I, I suppose, you know, if we're just looking at it, um, I'd say careers, yes, focus on, on the African continent, uh, focus your energies. We do need the, the critical skills, uh, the artisanships, the trades, which students don't like to go into too much because they feel university is the desired, uh, the desired qualification that you need to come out with, uh, but not realizing that they can also make a, a, a big difference in the general economy as well. Sam, what is, the, what is the career at the moment that's surprising you in terms of the sort of income people are able to generate by, by going down a particular path? It, uh, hopefully it's not something predictable. Well, if you want to go on the high end, you go structural engineering. Mm -hmm. And if you're more on something a technical... With soul. Something with soul. Is there nothing with what soul is, that makes what, money? What, what, what that makes money? Unless you, make, would, unless you Mick Jagger concerned. or David Bowie, I mean, <laughs> you know, they're people who have taken their art to another level um, and have made decent money out of it. But on the African continent, for the next two decades, is there nothing an inspiring we can do? An entrepreneur, someone who thinks out the box, someone who gets something totally different out there that no one else has thought of and, and goes with it. We have such advantages within Africa because we have... Um, grants to make new grants, whereas if you go to other con continents, they've been there, they've done that. We're in Africa, the world's our oyster. We can go out there and actually do it. So an entrepreneur, I think, would be the best field. And then, yes, you need your BA behind you because then at least you know, okay, this is the criteria I've got to follow in order for me mm. to be successful. That's the answer I was hoping for when she came to the party. Samantha Hama, Director at Nobuntu Recruitment, and Zakia Essa, Psychologist and Director at the Career Guidance Company. Thank you to you in Johannesburg, Sam, and to Zakia in Cape Town. And thanks to you for watching. There'll be more tonight, tomorrow. Until then, good night and goodbye.